Welcome to Happy Homes and Gardens. I'm your host. My name is Daphne Royce. I am a real estate broker, architecture, and interior designer. Ryan has been singing the national anthem in the Oracle Park Stadium since she was 11 years old. Ryan is 17 today and has spent the last decades writing songs and singing. One of her songs, Hollis and Lane, is to reflect the Silicon Valley teenager's lifestyle. Her powerful, sweet voice and songwriting skills are reminiscent of a young Taylor Swift, but full of her own personality. Ryan's next EP will be released in August. Let's welcome Ryan and let her tell us about this exciting news and her dreams and goals. Hi. Hi, welcome, Ryan. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Tell us about yourself. Oh, gosh. Well, I'm 17. I just graduated my junior year. So I'm now in summertime, which is kind of awesome because I have lots more time to write songs. And um, yeah, I've been working on this project. Um, It's going to be titled If I Thought About Anything Long Enough. And that comes from one of the lyrics and one of the three songs that's going to be on the EP. And this is kind of my first body of work that I've um, put together. So I'm really excited to have like a message, a theme that is like kind of a cohesive idea to share and uh, hopefully perform. Um, So yeah, that's kind of what I'm focusing on right now this summer is uh, getting that ready for release and just always writing and working with other people to just get better. That's the it's the constant, the constant goal. And would that be in August? Yeah. So, so in August, I'm planning on releasing one of the songs from the EP um, and there's three of them. So they'll be released in um, as singles each. And then at the end, I'll kind of release them all together as like a project. Will we be able to hear something today by you? Yes, I'm I'm going to play one of the songs. Um, I think it's going to be the first one that I release. Great. Yeah. Would you share what influenced your music, singing and songwritings? Was that influenced by any family members? That's a great question. I So none of my family members are super musical. Um, and so for my whole life, we were all kind of trying to like figure out where that passion came from but my mom was adopted and so she reconnected with her biological mother and we figured out that that side of her family is all kind of very musical and they all sing so we think that's where it came from (laughs) um but yeah I've always my parents are really supportive and we they moved the family piano in my bedroom so it's it's all kind of a family effort um to support me so it's awesome that's your studio it's like a little studio. It is. Yeah. Now, now it's easy to make music in your room. So that's kind of how, it, how it works. Um, yeah. I think in your little world. Yes, it is my little world. I've created this, this habitat of my imaginations. My imagination. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Do you play any music instruments other than piano? Yeah. So my first instrument was piano. My mom um, made me and my brother take piano lessons in elementary school. Um, And so that was the first instrument. I started playing guitar because my brother played guitar. It was always kind of, I would do kind of whatever he did. Um, So I played guitar and then I kind of play bass, not very well, but it's kind of similar to guitar. Um, And then ukulele. But once you kind of learn piano and guitar, you can kind of figure out the other ones but I would say I play guitar the most when I'm writing songs um just because it's convenient okay yeah yeah you mentioned elementary that's the way you started piano yeah I started piano lessons in I think first grade but I had to stop because my hands were too small so I couldn't like reach the keys so they said to wait a year um so then I think I started again in in second grade um and yeah that's kind of where it I'll start it in the, that piano. That's the piano. That's yeah. it. You're finding a treasure. It, yeah. It's amazing. I love having it in my room. It's nice. When did you discover that you can sing? 
I always kind of just, I just kind of started singing. It was never something that um, I like decided I wanted to do. I kind of was always doing it. I remember though, in, I think when I was seven, I saw a local like summer camp perform a musical um, of Bye Bye Birdie. I went with my mom to watch one of our family friends perform. And after that, I was like, I want to do that. I want to be in musical theater. So then I started doing musical theater. And then it kind of just came from there. My dad actually was the one that encouraged me to start writing my own songs because I would sing around the house all the time. And he's like, hey, why don't you try singing your own songs? That's like more interesting. I was like, okay. So I started writing my own songs and uh, that's kind of what I do now. You must be a dreamer with a vivid imagination. So I, what were the challenges to writing songs in different stage throughout the last 10 years? So it was always something that I did for fun um, in elementary school. It was never, I never, you know, was, wasn't releasing anything really. It was all just kind of for fun in my bedroom. And over the pandemic, I had like extra time to really kind of do what I wanted to do. Um, So I kind of became more aware of what writing songs was for me. And it kind of had this switch where I was writing songs with like a goal in mind, whether or not that was to release, but just to kind of get my message across. Because before writing songs was very like on a whim, like anything, like just random themes or whatever. But now I write songs with intention, like about my life. And um, yeah, it's become like maybe more therapeutic. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's more of a process now of a creative process. Yeah. Have you noticed any changes like in the style wise? Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, it all comes from listening to different artists. So I used to listen to Taylor Swift and, all like, like the radio, what I was on the radio, but, um, it's so easy to like listen to music now just with like having a phone and like Spotify. So I really love Joni Mitchell. Um, I love, I listen to the Beatles a lot. I'm just going through the playlist in my head. I listen to, I kind of listen to a lot of just small singer songwriters like Lexi Jade, Lizzie McAlpine. She's awesome. So yeah, it, it just comes from broadening my, my ear. My musical ear, yeah. So what inspired you most that create your songs? I mean, a lot of my songs are about my life. So it's like heartbreak or, you know, the daily teenage struggles inspire my music. But it's it's really just other artists and listening to other music that inspires me. I'll kind of, I'll listen to a song and I'll like the way that they you know, like worded that like message. I've I've become very interested in writing things with metaphors more, kind of making it a little like twisting the narrative into a metaphor. So it's like hidden and weaved into this story um, instead of just kind of saying it. Um, So yeah, other artists and just my life in general. What is your guilty pressure music? Ah, oh, that's a good question. I feel like I wouldn't consider it a guilty pleasure, but I love Little Mix. It's like this this British girl group, um, and they just sing like fun dance music. And every time I played in the car, my friends were like, "Switch it, turn on something else." But I just love it. It's just so fun. Um, so yeah, maybe that. But I also like like musical theater music. I like to listen to. Um, Legally Blonde, Dear Evan Hansen is one of my favorite musicals and everybody likes Mamma Mia. So I don't know if that's a guilty pleasure, but yeah, like musical theater music is also something that I like to listen to. Mamma Mia is popular. Everybody it is popular. Everyone likes it. It's always playing. So it's Mama good. Mamma Mia too. Yeah, exactly. It's fun music. Well, it's ABBA. So ABBA is a great band. So I understand that you're also an actress. Well, yeah, I mean, so the acting comes from me wanting to do musical theater because I like to sing. So that's kind of why I started musical theater was just because I like to perform and I like to sing. And that was the 
obvious way for me to get to do that um, was musical theater. And I just like being creative and I like working with the crew. I like working with the cast and the whole process of it and dressing up and the lights and the the adrenaline. It's all fun. So that's kind of why I, I act. But I would say I do musical theater more for the singing aspect. Yeah. So where have you performed? Well, I mean, I started singing the national anthem because I wanted to get out there. And that was like another way I thought, oh, if I sing the national anthem, someone could hear me. And then, you know, just a that was like my little kid dream. And I thought that that was the way to get there. Um, so I've, I've continued singing the national anthem because it's it's just fun. And um, my do my school musicals. Um, I used to do public theater, but I don't have as much time for that now that I'm focusing more on my own music. Um, and then recently I've, my mom has helped me kind of find some local gigs. I've been just performing in front of restaurants and in the streets, busking, things like that. And you play regularly? I, I try to, I try to, for sure. I played um, in front of just a local grocery store last week, just some, something like fun like that. So do you advertising anywhere that people can find you where you play? Yeah, so most of the time I'll just put it on my social media, um, which is just ryan.barnes um, on my Instagram. And so most times I'll just say, hey, I'm performing here. Come stop by. Great. I hope you get more audience. After I know. It's fun, though. Everyone's, it's always fun. It's always fun. My parents come out. My grandpa came to watch me. So, yeah. So when you're not singing, not adding, what do you like to do at home? What is your hobbies? Uh, it's boring, but I just write a lot of songs. I just play the piano and play the guitar. But I do I recently have decided that I want to be good at embroidering. So that's the uh, that's the summer activity, embroidering. I'm not good yet, but it's okay. I have to learn. Um, but I have two dogs, which are my... They're my body and soul. I love my dogs. Um, so I play with them and just my friends. I just hang out with my friends. Yeah. You must have a lot of patience. Oh, know? patience. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about patience. I have pretty good patience. My dogs are, they take a lot of patience. We, they, we have a pool and the, they like to jump in the pool every day. And then they like to come inside and lay on all the beds all wet. So it's, it's like having a toddler. Absolutely. <laughs> and they're not puppies either. They're like full grown, large black labs, but it's all fun. So I know you're in high school right now. And do you have any plan with goals? Are you music and adding careers? I definitely will pursue music outside of high school. So um, I, I want to go, if I go to college, I'll go to college for music probably. Um, and moving to LA after school, after I graduate, um, or moving to Nashville, it's, it's the deciding time for me is figuring out kind of where I want to be, but yeah, I, I, I'll definitely continue doing music outside of high school. Well, you at school, do you have any uh, favorite subjects? So I actually like math. Math is my favorite subject and I've been thinking about it. I was like, why do I like math more than I like English? Because the the you'd think that a songwriter would like to write the most but I think that I like math because it's like you're solving something you have to like think differently to solve the math equation I mean I'm thinking about it pretty deeply here I like math the best but I think that's why because English at school is very it's structured so it's not as like you don't get to be as creative but math is you get to think outside the box maybe but yeah do you get any help to write your lyrics? No, I do it all kind of on my own. Um, when I was starting out, though, I had like a mentor and he kind of taught me the structure of how songs work. Um, but yeah, no, now it's just kind of me. So, yeah, I write a lot of songs on my own for the most part. But um, I do collaborate with some kids from my high school. J.J. Jones, he's another songwriter. And uh, one of my good friends, Daniel Roman, is a songwriter and producer. So we all kind of write songs together. Um, but they graduated this year. So it'll be just me next year, unfortunately. 
Do you guys inspire each other or encourage each other to write songs? Yeah, collaboration is a fun thing because as songwriters, you can kind of reach a point where you're you're kind of like creatively blocked. But when you're working with other people, they kind of you can bounce ideas off each other and it kind of moves like like a it's I mean, it's collaboration. So you have more you have more minds, more creative ideas flowing. So it's it's yeah, definitely encouraging each other. And um, yeah. Will you think that you meeting new people will go to new places that actually helped you to get more inspiration to write different kinds of songs? Definitely. I mean, that kind of goes back to what inspires me just listening to other people. I'm, I'm super observant. So I really do learn the most from watching other people. And so working with other songwriters and other creative people only inspires me. You only can take something away from that. I feel like. Um, so when I'm writing songs, I start off sometimes with um like an idea for like a like a title idea or or like a melody idea like a chord progression and then I'll sit down at the piano or sit down at the guitar and kind of like plunk out some chords and think about the lyrics and think about what I'm trying to say um and then but when I'm working with other people it's like sometimes you have to work faster because you're in like you have like a time crunch um and so when you have a time crunch that can sometimes like weirdly make your mind come up with things faster. Cause sometimes when you have a bunch of time and you're on your own, you can be more critical about what you're going to say and think about it longer. Cause you, you have the time to, but when you're writing fast, you kind of have to compromise and be like, okay, that's good. Let's just say that. And then they move on and then it kind of all comes together. So that's something that I've learned with collaborating this past year of, really learned a lot about how I write lyrics and like how the, my lyrical style, I don't know if I could explain what my lyrical style is, but I've just kind of honed in on how I like say things, I guess if that's the way to say it. Um, and so that comes from working with others just because everyone's different. And so when we're all kind of working together, you, you realize how you say things differently than how other people say things. Um, and I'd never really collaborated with other people before this year, just because the pandemic and I just was unaware of who to collaborate with before. But I'm really, really glad that I met people at my school this year that do the same thing as I do, because we were able to kind of work together and share that passion for music. I heard many of your songs. Could you tell us a little bit about how you create those videos into your music? It's my mother. She's the she's the cameraman. I'm the director. She's the cameraman. Um, my video for Pulitzer Lane, actually, we made at my grandma's house because she, my grandma was moving out. And so she had, her whole house was empty. And so I was like, this is perfect. This is like my childhood house. And we're going to film this song about childhood in this house. And so my mom will just kind of film and we'll just create them for fun. Um, and my music video for September was just a montage of a bunch of like my camera roll videos and like pictures. So that one was fun to make because that was the most real one from my life. The other ones were like concepts and themes and stories that I was creating with my mom and then I would just edit them on iMovie because that's just easy but yeah it's my mother so much fun it is fun it is fun sometimes it takes a while but it's fun would you mind to play a song for us yeah sure yeah so I'll play um this one's called hearing loss and I would say this one's about just my high school experience and just yeah it, it's a it's pretty pretty uh direct with the words but yeah Shower run. 
people have got a meaner. There's a hill with a house where everybody goes. My innocent mouth, cause I don't smoke here in Los. Over the noise from the parking lot. But I hear a lot from heartbeats and paranoia. No one wants to talk about the weather anymore. Everybody talks about how thin he is, how she's a whore. Now I'm tired. Securing stuff here in Los Over the noise from the parking lot But I hear a lot from heartbeats and paranoia No one wants to talk about their favorite color anymore Everybody talks about the rumor from the month before Thank you so much. Thanks for letting me play that. That was really fun. Thank you so much. And congratulations to your EP. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. All right. Have a good day. You too. Bye.